Hi everyone, this is Justin, and today I'll be running through the red ace of paper, um, specifically questions one, two, five. Um, Alright, so first things first, it's important to understand how the circulation system works in a human. Um, so just for reference, um, a adult, normal adult circulation um, runs like so. Its basic aim is to reoxygenate blood. Um, so it's a pretty simple loop. It starts with uh, deoxygenated blood entering the right atrium. Um, so this blue deoxygenated blood enters the right atrium. Then it goes to the right ventricle. From there it enters the pulmonary circulation um, and blood is oxygenated. So it goes to the lungs and blood is reoxygenated. Um, reoxygenated blood then enters the left atrium, then the left ventricle. Uh, and finally, uh, the reoxygenated blood uh, exits the heart and enters the uh, systemic circulation or the rest of the body which actually needs the oxygen um, where the oxygen is consumed. So it's a basic rundown of the um, normal adult circulation um, but what we've got here today is a um, fetal circulation. So it's, different in a couple of, it's different in a couple ways. Um, first off, the lungs cannot be used to oxygenate blood. Um, they're effectively useless because the baby is suspended in amniotic fluid. It's, it doesn't have any access to air. Um, so to solve that, the body has, um, uh, the fetus, sorry, um, gets its oxygenated blood from the mother. Uh, and it goes through um, this path. So first off, this is the maternal artery um, where all the uh, oxygenated blood is coming from the mother. Um, and this is meeting up with the uh, baby or the uh, fetal, um, uh, fetal uh, circulation at this junction. Um, so basically, this is where the uh, fetus gets its oxygenated blood from. So from there, once the uh, blood becomes oxygenated, it enters the uh, fetal circulation and it most significantly um, it becomes involved with this um, fetal vein um, carrying deoxygenated blood from the systemic circulation, okay, the rest of the body. So we've got this seriously uh, deoxygenated blood meeting this uh, really uh, oxygenated blood. So what we get is this sort of mixed oxygenation blood coming out uh, uh, from this junction. Um, from there, it enters again the uh, left uh, atrium, just like before, um, except it can go from there through a different path to the uh, adult. Instead of going through the lungs, it can enter one of two shunts, the foramen ovale, which is uh, in between the two atria of the heart, or the ductus arteriosus. Um, so once it enters one of these two shunts, it basically leaves for the rest of the uh, fetus's body, the systemic circulation. Um, where it can either um, be consumed by the rest of the body or it um, exits off another branch to be reoxygenated or, or uh, you know, oxygenated to a greater extent. Um, so this is kind of a, a basic uh, loop for the fetal circulation. All right, so now that we sort of understand that, we can start to try and answer the question. So um, question one, which of the following points of the blood passing in the point be more oxygenated after birth than before it? We have points M, N, and L. So um, M is M is here, um, N is here, and L is uh, here. Um, all right. So basically, um, after birth, we're going to have two sorts of blood. We're going to have deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood. And on the uh, left side of the heart, so this side. Um, we're going to have more oxygenated blood because it's returning from the um, from the lungs and going to the rest of the body. Whilst on the right side of the heart, we're going to have deoxygenated blood in the adult. So what this means is that um, where point N before um, before birth, it's going to be mixed. After birth, since it's on the left side of the heart, we're going to get fully oxygenated blood there. So that means that at point N we're going to have um, more oxygenated blood after birth. So uh, the answer would be B for question one. Uh, question two, at which of the following points will the blood passing the point be significantly less oxygenated after birth than before it? And then we have points um, K, uh, so, sorry, let's find that cursor, K, um, L, and P up here. All right. Um, 
let's start with point K. So um, after birth, at point K, it, the since it's on the left side of the heart, it's going to be fully oxygenated. So it goes from mixed to um, to fully oxygenated, um, so meaning that we'll, we'll be expecting an increase, not a decrease in oxygenation. So K is non-answer, so rule out A. Um, L, L. After birth, um, it's going to be on the right side of the heart, so it's going to be fully deoxygenated. But however, um, because it starts already at the uh, fully deoxygenated blood um, prior to birth. We're going from uh, fully deoxygenated to fully deoxygenated. It's about, going to be about the same level, both before and after birth. So we can rule out uh, L. As for P, well, P I haven't really um, colored in yet, but it's kind of the same principle um, as before for the fetal circulation. We're going to be having um, mixed blood primarily um, in, this, uh, in this loop, um, but uh, after birth, since it's on the left side of the heart, um, then that means that um, it's going to be fully oxygenated um, in, through this part, um, meaning that we're going from mixed blood at P um, before birth to fully oxygenated blood um, at P after birth, meaning that we'll be expecting an increase in oxygenation. So um, neither K, uh, L or P are the answer. Um, so therefore, D would be the answer for question two. Uh, all right. All right, question three. The unit gram liter uh, is equivalent to. Um, so first off, uh, minute uh, liter times minute gram. So minute, uh, minute uh, liter, minute gram. Um, that's equal to, oh god, sorry, minute gram. Um, and that's equal to minute squared on liters uh, times grams. So, which is not equal to uh, grams a liter. Um, all right, so uh, just going down the list, liters a minute uh, times grams a minute, uh, that's probably not going to be equivalent. Liters a minute uh, divided by grams a minute, so uh, uh, liters a minute uh, divided by grams a minute. Um, that's equal to liters a minute times minutes per gram which is equal to liters on grams, which is not equal to grams a liter. Um, last one, D, uh, uh, grams a minute divided by uh, liters a minute. So that's equivalent to grams a minute times minutes a liter which is equal to grams a min times min per liter, which is equal to grams per liter. So therefore, grams a minute, uh, grams a minute divided by liters a minute is equal to grams a liter. <clears throat> um, so therefore, the answer is D. All right, so question four and five um, refer to the FIC method. Uh, which is uh, used to determine blood flow. Um, so what we've got basically is uh, this equation, F is equal to Q on change in C, where F is the flow rate, uh, Q is the uh, quantity of oxygen injected, and C is the change in oxygen concentration between X and Y. Um, that can all be uh, gained from the stem, uh, specifically the second one. Um, all right, so um, basically what this uh, equation is used for is to me measure the uh, flow rate to, uh, from the uh, measured amounts of oxygen injected, um, sorry, the known quantities of oxygen injected and the known change in oxygen concentration between X and Y, where X is the uh, injection point and Y is the measurement point. All right, so what is the injection point? Well, the injection point in the body uh, would be the lungs because that's where we're gaining all of our oxygen from. Um, so 
Therefore, we can actually say that point X uh, in the in figure two is going to be the lungs because point in X is where we're injecting our oxygen from, and that is the lungs. All right. Uh, so question five. Uh, so we're trying to find the cardiac output. Um, the cardiac output in this instance will be the flow rate. So we're trying to find F. So where F is equal to Q on change in C. Now um, Q is going to be equal to the uh, amount of oxygen that we're injecting, which is uh, at the lungs and is 240 mils a liter, uh, mils a minute, sorry. And um, we're also trying to find the, constant, uh, the change in C where change in C is going to be equal to uh, the change in the concentration of the substance in the blood at point Y due to the addition of substance at point X over one minute. And I just got that from the step. Um, so at point Y, we're going to have a uh, oxygen concentration of 180 mils. And we're subtracting uh, that from the, uh, from the amount of uh, oxygen at point X, which is 120. Um, obviously both gone from the stem, um, which is equal to 60 mils. So our change in C is going to be equal to 60 mils between Y and X. Um, so just subbing all of that in, we get 240 on 60, which is equal to 4 uh, mil, uh, liters a minute, sorry, liters a minute, uh, which means that C is the correct answer. Just a quick aside on how we got the units of liters a minute. Um, well, with our equation, we've got F is equal to Q on C, change in C. Uh, Q is measured in, uh, I believe, sorry, Q is measured in mils a minute, whilst uh, the change in C is measured in mils a litre. Right, so what this means is that we have mils a minute being divided by milliliters a litre, which is equal to mils a minute times litres a mil. Uh, and since we can just cancel these out, we get litres a minute. Uh, again, just as another quick aside, um, in the initial recording of this video, I had the units wrong for, uh, for Q and C. I wasn't thinking, and I just copied across the flow rate units. Um, so the flow rate units are liters a minute. Uh, the unit for quantity of oxygen injected is um, mils a minute. And the units for um, change in oxygen concentration is, is going to be um, milliliters a liter.